Hello and welcome to another How to Draw video uh, during the coronavirus lockdown. This time we're going to be looking at drawing a duckling. Uh, here's one I drew a few years ago. Hopefully that's visible uh, on the screen. Uh, and I used this my Easter card a few years ago. I'll probably use my Easter card again this year. So I was hoping is that we might withdraw something a bit like this um, so that we can give cards to people who are isolated during this Easter, whether they be relatives or vulnerable older neighbours or just somebody want to send a nice message to. So I'm going to try and teach you how to draw uh, a duckling like that one. So um, to start with in this picture, uh, we're going to start by drawing a circle. Uh, it doesn't matter how scruffy it is because with this picture, the scruffier and the fluffier, the better. Uh, and then we're going to draw another circle about half the size of the first one with a bit of an overlap um, and probably a third the size of the first one. Um, so we've got two circles and they overlap. Uh, and to give us some kind of guide, we're going to use uh, that part of the first circle. In the middle of that, we're going to place a circle, which you should recognize is going to be our eye. We'll place an eye stripe in and an eye stripe in. And we're already beginning to build up the picture of our, uh, our duckling. Um, so um, we created that arc there. If we create an arc below it, which is similar, that gives us now uh, the beginnings of our beak. And our beak's about the length of this arc, going straight down and away. So the, the, the lengths are pretty similar. Uh, a nice curved around end uh, and a straight line to end it like so. And on the end, we're going to add this little hook section here. And what we want to do is try and give the feeling that the center of the beak is coming up um, here somewhere. So we've got one arc. Now we're going to create another arc. Um, and that's going to be where we're going to place the second eye if it's visible. Uh, we're going to place a nostril in the middle, put a nice arc over the top, uh, and we're starting to build up uh, our duckling's profile, which is great. Uh, add in a cheeky cheek, uh, and already we're getting the kind of idea of a duckling. Um, over the top, just make sure we've got a nice scruffy line for the top of the head of the duckling. Um, currently, it doesn't look like it's got um, any kind of three dimensions, but we'll add more to it in a moment's time and hopefully, hopefully build those dimensions up. Uh, underneath, we need to give our bottom lip going out to a bit of a cheek, uh, and there is the start of our duckling. Right, okay, then we want a nice scruffy back. Um, don't worry too much about how scruffy this is, there'll be a foot somewhere in the last uh, quarter of the big main circle we drew right at the beginning. So there, there's our leg, kind of powerful foot. Uh, our second foot will be this huge, great paddle foot. Uh, and all we need to add now is a bib and our duckling is starting to take shape. Right, using a darker pencil, let's start with our eye. We're happy with our eye is set, yes. Okay, so we're going to make a very dark eye. And the bigger our eye is, um, unless you're going for realism, then the, the more people are going to cue over your picture and look at it and say how cute your duckling actually is. So uh, there is a very large, cute eye. And from the large, cute eye, I'm going to be drawing some fairly random black blotchy kind of lines and these are the eye stripes of our duckling and to emphasize our eye a few lines around it and lines radiate out of it like so uh, and to give it some kind of three dimensions we're also going to add a bit of a, a shadow under there uh, and that means our eye will start to look more like an eye there's an ear hidden in the feathers back here, or at least that's what I believe it is, I've always been telling people that, so hopefully that's, that's correct. Um, and add into that our bottom of the head, and, and now we're beginning to form the straight shape and structure 
of Adverse Head. Okay, so that's looking quite cool. Uh, make a, a, an indentation in the black here at the front uh, and then try to play with these shapes until they look like they're starting to match each other. And a bit of shading into the front there. Right, let's try and, and make the face look more realistic. Um, our beak. So we toyed with the idea of a nostril being in this oval uh, on the beak. If we now follow the arc shape I drew earlier and start to shade it in, we start to give our beak a few three dimensions. So I'm going to put a bit of a kind of smiley beak shape in and add that hook at the front. I don't quite know its purpose, but um, it may, of course, be something to do with the uh, getting out of the egg. Uh, it's quite a short, dinky bill because this is a short, dinky bird. By putting this line in here, we emphasise the flatness of the of the beak or, or bill, I should say, and our lines can add into that feel by adding some shading where we think the light will be darkest from it. And that's why we added this arc over the bill. Now there will be another one on the other side, but of course, if we add the dark bit there, well, we've suggested the shape of the nostril on the other side. Now we can go as far as to suggest the uh, positioning of this blackness here which of course is the eye stripe. So I'm suggesting on the other side, I'm not actually really drawing it in. And then of course we've got this second eye stripe here uh, and I've sort of added that in just with a few random uh, streaks and lines. Okay, so that means we've got the suggestion of that second eye in there. We can't see it all because of course the bird's face is in the way, but by adding another little matching white blob in the middle of the eye, uh, we've given it a cuteness factor, which is uh, what we're after here. Um, and there is our cheek, and of course, the feathers around the outside of the face too. Brilliant. Right, so top of the head, imagine some lines going up and round up and round, up and round, and we've suddenly got a three-dimensional shape. And if we if we shade it following those three-dimensional guidelines, scruffily, really scruffily, um, really you're going to ruin this if you try to be too uh, neat. Uh, this is why uh, the original picture that I showed you a few minutes ago was drawn using pastels because uh, they really do allow you to have that kind of scruffiness in the nature of your shading in. Um, I probably shouldn't call it scruffiness, I probably, probably some kind of special technique. Let's just call it shading for now. Um, there we go. And then to add the emphasis that this is a, a soft, fluffy, downy bird, extend a few of those hairy, tufty feathers off and that's not looking so bad. Okay, let's add a rough of feathers coming below. We need a lower beak, of course, otherwise our bird's never gonna feed. Um, okay, uh, and some shading. Scruffy, remember, scruff rules in this picture. Uh, that bib will pass out on the other side as well. Okay, looks a bit pixie-like, but uh, there we go. Uh, now we're going to make the body. Now to make the body look effective, basically all lines really must be as random as possible, but must radiate straight back down and into the bird. Like so. Um, uh, and I'm gonna make that come down into the leg and there we go. I'm going to put some counter shading 
the top of the leg. Uh, and then we're going to just keep adding in some body fluff, uh, like so. And what we're likely to see is a bit of fluffiness around the outside where there is a wing. Here's the wing. And that shade behind it to emphasize that it's above the other bits of body. If I was drawing this in color, I'd be doing shades of black and of brown. And sometimes these both are just plain yellow, but I, I, I actually prefer to see the really multicolored ones. And now it's up to you to play with your bird to make it as colorful as possible, to make a beautiful card to say, um, hope you're keeping well this Easter or whatever the message is that you're going to say. Right, let's add in a chunky leg. Uh, really quite muscular, despite the fact that um, it's a tiny little duck. It's got to support all that weight on that one leg as it walks along. Uh, and this will be the other foot shading underneath. And let's put some shading along all the lower edges. Add in some scenery. Sign it off so that it's yours. Uh, add any detail you want to. It might not be perfect, but I tell you now that if I was stuck indoors, couldn't get out, and somebody sent one of these to me and made it nice and cute, I think I would be very thankful. So I'd love if during this lockdown, people made cars like this to send out to their loved ones or to their neighbors or to anybody who simply can't get out, just to say, we're thinking of you. What better Easter wish could we have? Okay, enjoy it.